All right, let's Good get stuff. into the agenda. And the top of the agenda is the Brisbane Lions. We've been threatening this all week since we scrambled them at the end of Monday nights. The merged entity is about to play its 500th game, but it's the last three that have brought back a familiar ripple of excitement. They just want the ball more. They want to win more. That was brilliant from McCluggage. It deserves a goal. Oh, they're going to fight this one through. Today we'll, we'll give them a fair bit more belief in us than what they've had for, for some time. It's just a young team that's hungry. That's, that's what it is. The day the Brisbane Lions came of age. They are well and truly on their way. And the future is so exciting for the Lions. We saw a lot of the future on show, a lot of solid performances from their younger players. Really positive signs for our footy club. We feel like we're building as a club, we just want to win. So we've been invited into the coach's house up in Brisbane. Chris Fagan is with us on AFL 360. Chris, thanks and welcome. Uh, it's a pleasure to be there, men. All right, you, you've had a few days to think about it. You've gauged your young players and how they're dealing with this. Give us the coach's view as... What is this? Is, has this been the breakthrough? Uh, it's a little difficult to say. I mean, the bottom line is we've still only won four games for the season and we're 16th on the ladder, so we've still got a lot of work to do. But I'd have to say there's more optimism around the place than, than I've seen it in, in the last uh, 18 months, and it's exciting to see. It's just good to see, particularly for the guys that have been at the club for some time and the staff that have been at the club for some time, to... To see the smile on their face and to see, you know, they've been able to have a little glimpse, I suppose, of what's possible into the future if we can uh, keep our act together. So it's been coming. I think everybody in football has acknowledged that all year and you've had to be patient and work on the small <coughs> things along the way. What do you think has, what do you think has clicked? What has worked? What, what's led to a stretch of form like this? Uh, uh, probably, I mean, a, a lot. Of, we've had a very even team contribution statistically in all sorts of areas at the end of each of those games. But I think probably since the break, and I, and I can't really put my finger on it, but I feel like our younger guys that have been around for a year and a half, two years, have been able to just play for longer in games. You know, they've been able to keep the pressure on, keep their energy up and uh, finish games off, which has been, a, a you know, a bit of a problem for us. But um, uh, just lately, uh, they seem to have... Uh, taken a step forward in that regard and uh, uh, we've been able to produce some pretty good form. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, Faze. Play for longer in games. It's really important because what happens, I'm sure you're teaching them, and, and you are, we spoke about it on, on, on Sunday, you're teaching them offence, you're teaching them defence. To be a really competitive team, you've got to have a rapid defence and when you've got the pill, you've got to be really aggressive offensively. If they don't stay in games for the entire games, the defence falls down. And what I reckon I'm seeing over the... We're all seeing is a, 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 be, a better balance of what they've been able to produce. Yeah, that, that, that's true. I mean... Um you know, I think our last three games, we've kept teams to around 60 or 70 points, which has been a bit of a breakthrough for us. We've, we've been able to do that occasionally, but we've been able to do it consistently over the, the, the last three games. And the other thing that's been important for us is we've been really, really good at contested ball. And uh, that's been an area that, that we've lacked a little bit in in the last uh, few years, but certainly picked up in more recent times. And I think that's due to the fact that we've, you know, Barry, McCluggage, Rayner and those guys have, have, have picked up their work in that area to add to the, the work that's been done so well by, by Dane Beams and, and Dane Zorko for such a long period of time. And, and Reese Matheson's another one who's stepped up recently as well. I think Tommy Cutler's another one. I, certainly that Eric Hipwood's another one. Yeah, Tom, Tommy's been good. He's uh, like He spent some time in the reserves early in the season and uh, he's uh, really valued his spot since he's been back and been a consistent contributor for us. He's, he's actually quite a threat out there on the wing and uh, Eric Hipwood, his last three or four weeks, uh, he seems to have just taken a little step forward in his development and the pleasing part is he's, he's been leading up at the footy and marking the ball with his arms fully outstretched which has been something that was a bit of a problem early in the year but he seems to have overcome that and uh, you know he's providing a great threat at the moment he's a you know he's a tall man at 203 centimetres and when he when he puts his arms all the way out it's pretty hard for defenders to spoil the ball. 40 games in your coaching career you talk about the growth in your team and from your players what about self-assessment. What about the growth in yourself as a coach, which takes in man management, takes in tactics, takes in being a senior coach? How, how far has that come, you think? 
Uh, oh, I think you're always trying to find ways to improve yourself. I think you've got to do that uh, to set the right example to your players. So, uh, you know, I'm consistently reading books and talking to other coaches to find out ways that I, you know, I can get the message through more effectively. Um, you know, probably, if anything, I've just been a little bit more relaxed uh, since the bye. I couldn't tell you why, but I have been. And, and uh, probably handing over more of the responsibility performance to the playing group themselves and uh, getting them to plan for games a little bit more. And uh, that seems to have worked effectively. Um, you know, we've been trying to get that player ownership as part of our culture and that seems to have taken a bit of a step up in recent times. How much, or do you think it was disrespectful, comments about you and the club lacking um, tactical nous? Do you disregard that completely? Or, or how far do you think it was off, off the mark? Yeah, I mean, I, I I didn't hear the comments to begin with, but obviously these things filter filter through. Uh, I mean, I think uh, the people who made the comments are probably well-meaning, but the thing is that you don't really know about the strengths and weaknesses of your coaching group unless you work internally in the club. And, uh, you know, I can assure all of our fans and... Uh, everybody in football out there that we've got a really strong coaching group uh, with a wide range of experiences. They're all, they're all good teachers and development type coaches, which is what we need with our group at the moment. And, you know, we're growing together with our group. And, and uh, you know, we've got an experienced guy like, like Danny Daly, who's worked at North Melbourne and, and Richmond. Uh, you know, he's pretty much my right-hand man. And he's really astute tactically and uh, he's doing a fantastic job. And our, our line coaches have been around for a while. And, uh, you know, I think if you talk to our players, uh, they, they feel like they're well coached and uh, well prepared each weekend. And, you know, like them, we're trying to improve all the time. So now it's Adelaide and you get them without the bookends. There's no Tex and there's no Talia. Uh, how, how big is the opportunity? How important is it to back up what you've done the past three weeks? Oh, you know, we, we'd obviously like to con continue on our winning way, but, you know, Adelaide are a team that have got a chance to make <coughs> finals, so they're going to be highly motivated. They've, uh, they've got a terrific record against Brisbane over, I think, the last three or four years. So uh, we're going to have to be at our best and we've got to make sure that our players have moved on from what was a fantastic victory on the weekend in Launceston to, to turn up on, on, on Saturday night and, you know, produce a performance that we can be proud of and that our supporters will really like. And, you know, hopefully they'll they'll come along to the gabble. We've noticed the crowds are starting to grow, so I think our fans are starting to believe in our group a little bit more. And, you know, we've just got to turn up and, and play with the same energy and pressure that we've been playing the last three weeks. And, you know, there's no reason why we can't be really competitive against the Crows on Saturday night. Is there a latest update on Harris Andrews, Chris? Uh, I think Harris has got to go and see a specialist in, in uh, Melbourne sometime in the next couple of days to get uh, the all clear to, to rejoin training fully and, and do contact work. So um, he obviously won't be playing this weekend, but he, he might be some chance uh, next week. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But we're not going to rush him back. Um, you know, he's a really important player and he's a young guy and we just want to make sure he's fully confident when he returns. But he's, he's a lot healthier than he was three or four weeks ago, I can assure you of that. Yeah. Hey, more broadly, you're part of the competition committee. The next meeting is next week. The debate is right underway in Melbourne. Nathan Buckley started the day by saying that starting points would be a blight. Malcolm Blight came back and said that... Uh, if you don't like it, <laughs> resign and go enjoy the unemployment queue. You've seen starting points and you're part of the committee, Chris. Uh, are, you, are you a supporter of the concept? Yeah, I think we've got to keep an open mind about uh, any changes that are made. I mean, I think, you know, ultimately if the AFL to decide to do anything, um, there'll be elements of it that we'll like and there'll be elements of it that we don't like and it'll be different for different clubs depending on their strengths and weaknesses. But, you know, the controlling body's got the best interests of the game at heart and, uh, you know, from the perspective of the, the, the Brisbane Lions footy club, uh, we're open to any changes that they might bring along and that'll add to the excitement of next season and we'll spend a lot of time over the, over the summer if they do bring the changes in, uh, working out the best way to play. And I think the good thing is that um, uh, if they do bring any changes in, everyone will know about them by the end of October, so we'll have plenty of time to adapt and change and and get ready for, for season 2019. But, you know, I think things that might open up the game a little bit and help forwards score more and take more marks and the ball to move more freely and to, for there to be more scoring, I, I think that's what the fans want to see. And, 
you know, I've said it before, we're in the entertainment business, so uh, let's entertain the fans. So you've got the hands-on with starting points, so you're, you've got the advantage for us. Is Could that achieve what you've just spoken about? Uh, I think possibly. I mean, we had a 20-minute trial up here four weeks ago, and so it's only a small amount of evidence, but... Um, uh, the players really enjoyed the game. That was the feedback from them. Um, they were surprised just how much space that they had. Um, so, you know, based on that small sample, uh, they were very positive about it. And, you know, obviously the AFL's doing, a sim doing similar experiments at different clubs around the country. And, you know, they'll gather their information and they'll, they'll make the changes that they see necessary. But, um, you know, life's all about adapting and... Uh, that's what we have to do if they bring the changes in. I don't know if this is going to work, Fags, but can you do me a favour? <clears throat> can you walk to your record collection behind you in the corner <laughs> and just get out the first yeah. two records? Because I want to know what a 55-year-old is listening to on vinyl. You seriously want me to do that, yeah. do you? Yeah. <laughs> Creedence Clearwater Revival, I'm sure, is in there. Yes, it is, mate, actually, to be truthful. What's it's a very wide-ranging selection, Robbo. There's a bit of Ed Sheeran and a, uh, ah. there's a bit of Beatles and Super Tramp and Super Ozzy Tramp. Crawl and uh, Cole Chisel. Go uh, over, yeah. uh, so, uh, go over <laughs> and get the first two records out and tell us what they are. Uh, OK. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to get them out. Hey. So, uh, <laughs> I reckon the first one's Beatles. It looks like uh, a Beatles thing. Old, I love Vinyl. No, um... So here we go. Um, yep. I've got uh, Ed Sheeran here. That's the uh, the uh, orange one. Uh, that's his album. And the other one there is a Dire Straits album, Love Over Gold. And I think oh. I've got every Dire Straits album that's ever been made. So uh, I, uh, I love my record collection. It helps me relax. And, uh, um, you know, my daughter's bought me a record player about two years ago, so I suddenly got back into uh, vinyl. I've been trying to buy all the, the albums that I had when I was a young bloke, so uh, I'm doing pretty well, I think. Yeah, and you just became the coolest coach in the world, Chris. <laughs> 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 hey, you already were, Fags. Hey, the footy world's wrap for you and what you're doing up there and we like your kids and we like your old blokes and we like what you, Hodgie's doing, so good luck on the weekend. It's going to be hard, but we're all, everyone will be tuning in. Yeah, thanks very much for your support and, you know, it'd be great if we can continue our improvement and, uh, you know, get the Lions some respect back in the competition. Good on you. Chris Fagan at home in Brisbane on AFL 360. Well, how about that? He's a star. First two records, Ed Sheeran, Die Straits. He is a star. Everyone's wrapped awesome. for him.